All right, folks, and welcome back to Affinity Photo. So this week's tutorial comes to us from our Facebook group here. We wanted to take a look at how to non-destructively burn and dodge a photo. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, dodging makes a photo lighter. Burning makes certain areas of the photo darker. Now, there are tools over here for dodge and burn. They're called the dodge tool and the burn tool. I know, rocket science, huh? But I want to do something a little bit different with you today. I want to show you how to do this non-destructively using masks. So masks are one of those things that's very difficult for people to grasp initially. So I have a very easy way of showing this in a way that allows us to dodge and burn non-destructively using masks. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this image comes from Flickr, right? So the artist attribution is in there. Go ahead and check her out if you're interested. So this is our pixel image. Let's go ahead and duplicate it first thing off. And then let's rename it and call it burn. All right, so we got a burned image on top of the background. Now, make sure that you have this thing locked. We don't wanna mess with the background because we're working non-destructively. So now, once we've got this burn selected, the first thing we're gonna do here with this burn layer, we're gonna come up and we're gonna put a curves adjustment on. Now, for those that don't know a lot about curves, we're not gonna cover them in depth in this lecture, but if you take the darks and you move them over this way, you see how the picture gets darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this down dark just a little bit, and right about halfway, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down a little bit further. So you see that my midtones get a little bit darker and my darks get a little darker. So I think that we're pretty good there. And let's go ahead and hit OK. Don't overdo it on the darks. Now, we're going to nest this curves adjustment inside the burn layer. So we got burn, curve. Now, we're going to add a mask layer. All right. Now, we're going to move the mask up above. So it goes burn, mask, curve. And these two are inside of here. Now, we're going to be doing all of our work on this mask layer. So let's go ahead and grab the mask layer. And now, remember with masks, black conceals, white reveals. So I want to conceal this entire burn layer. So how do I do that? Well, I come over to my flood tool, I grab the black, and I just tap. All right, now what just happened to my mask? You see how it went dark? That means that all the black is there, so I'm not seeing any of this layer. So now, if I want to darken certain parts of my image, you can absolutely do that. Now, I'm gonna over-exaggerate this in the first one so that you can clearly see it happening. Don't do this at home. You come over to your brush. I'm gonna grab a very simple spray brush. It's gonna be very soft, so I'm coming over to my sprays. And I'm gonna grab my white color. Now, if black conceals, white reveals, and I use the right bracket key to bring up the size of my brush. What do you think is going to happen when I come across your face with this brush? Notice how it got darker. You see over in the eye area there where I touched it? You'll notice anything that I touch here becomes darker. So this is a nice way to burn some of your image in a non-destructive fashion. Because let's say you go too far. You can always come over with the black and you can undo it. So it really is non-destructive. We're not even touching any of our original image. So you can absolutely dodge and burn the places you want. So let's go ahead and just do a couple here. I know this is a tutorial, so this isn't gonna be a how-to in terms of where I'd all dodge. That will take a long time. So I'm coming over to the white because white's gonna reveal this curve adjustment layer. I'm gonna ratchet down my brush, and I think I've got some lights that I really wanna knock down here, right along the nose. So I'm gonna come over to the nose, and making sure I'm on the mask layer, I'm going to darken those up just ever so slightly. Same thing is true here in the head. Now, I might bring a little more contrast to the cheek there. You see where I swept it down? If you ever want to see what you're doing with this, just turn off the layer. You'll see the subtle adjustments that we made there. Now, whether you'd put them there or whether you wouldn't, 
that's up to you. I think it looks pretty good like that. I'm not going to worry too much about doing every area. And then I might also turn down just a little bit here, make sure I'm on the mask layer, bring up my white again, bring up my brush, and we're going to darken that eye just a little bit more here. I just want to knock down those whites a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Okay, so if we want to see what we're doing, turn the layer on, turn the layer off, and you can definitely see where I applied it. Now, I over-exaggerated this on purpose so that for the purposes of the tutorial, you could see the actual effect. Now, if we want to do this one more time, we're going to right-click here. We're going to duplicate that background layer one more time. We're going to bring it to the top. And now we're going to call this Dodge. And when you dodge things, you lighten them. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to come over to our adjustment layer. I'm going to grab a curve, but this time... I'm going to lighten it. So I'm going to move this over into my mid-tones. I'm going to lighten those a little bit. So I think that that's pretty good. All right. And then I nest it inside the dodge layer. And then I come over and I add a mask. So the structure here is dodge layer, mask, curve. Now, we're on the mask. How do we conceal it? Flood fill. Black, boom. All right, now, if it's all concealed, if black conceals, what reveals? White. So let's go to the whites. Let's come over to our brush. Go to the paintbrush. And again, I'm using just a soft, average old brush, right? I'm using a spray paint. I'm using the 64 pixel one. And I'm painting in white. So now... Theoretically, everywhere I touch here, if there's a place that's a little bit too light, I can move this down. Now, in reality, I would probably move it to roughly a 50% opacity, and I would probably bring the flow down to maybe even 10%, and I would drop the hardness to an absolute zero if I was doing this for real. And now, you can lighten some of these areas. Now, I know you can't really see that, so I'm going to intentionally bring this full circle here. This is going to be crazy too much. Okay, so now if I touch it, we will clearly see it lighten. You see how it now blew out that forehead area there? That's a lot of lightning. So you're not going to want to do that. If you undid it and you wanted to do it and you did too much, you could always come over with the black and you could come right back around to where you were. So in working these two layers the way that we do, this allows you to lighten and darken using masks and really what you're allowing to show through is the curve layer underneath. This is a very simple technique in order to make this happen. So if you like the technique, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel where we're going to do a lot more Affinity Photo tutorials this year. And if you've got anything you want to see, go ahead and drop it off in the questions below. So this is Jeremy Hazel on behalf of Seven Seasons Studios saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.